اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد في الأولين وصل على سيدنا محمد في الآخرين وصل على سيدنا محمد في الملأ الأعلى اليوم الدين ما شاء الله لا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نوين الأربعين نوين الاعتكاف نوين الخلوة نوين العزلة نوين الرياضة نوين السلوك نوين الصيام لله تعالى العظيم في هذا المسجد مدد أولياء الله عينون بعون الله وكون عونا لنا بالله عصنا هذا فضل الله مدد سيد السلطان سيد الشيخ عبد الله فعز الغساني مدد السلطان سيد الشيخ محمد ضازم عادل الحقاني مدد سيد الشيخ محمد عادل رباني رجال الله عينون بعون الله وكون عونا لنا بالله عصنا هذا فضل الله طريقتنا الصحبة والخير في الجمعية أطيع الله وأطيع الرسول وأولي الأمر منكم أبي الله أبي بروفيت صلى الله عليه وسلم أن أبي ذو سوار أن أثورتي Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah for Rabi ul Awal. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah granting us to witness this season of beauty and lights, the month of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the month of Rabi ul Awal. Alhamdulillah. Rejoice. Tonight, it depends when you started this month, but tonight is the month, night of the ninth. And the majority of scholars in Ahl Sunnah, they, they think that the night of the Mawlid is on the 9th, but the famous saying, the famous qawl uh, in the Ummah is that it is on the 12th. So any of these nights are holy nights. Alhamdulillah, we treat each night as if it is the night of the Mawlid and we celebrate it accordingly. Allah, 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 Allahumma salli ala man minhun shakkat al-asrar wa anfalakat al-anwar wa fihir taqat al-haqaiq wa tanazzalat ulumu adama adama fa'ajaz al-khalaiq. Alhamdulillah. What can we say about Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that has not been said? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has himself showed so much uh, praise, gave so much praise in Holy Quran. People think that the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran is limited to the few verses where Prophet is mentioned explicitly. Or the verse, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, Verily, you have a tremendous character. And the verse of Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, means you're constantly in under our gaze, under our attention, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi And Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas, uh, reads it min an fasikum not fusikum min an fasikum means from is the most precious amongst you uh, and countless verses of holy quran where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing his the status of his habib sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam any of us we can spend in the best of poets or uh, thinkers or writers can spend their entire life trying to write something they cannot come to close to one verse of quran in praise of signal what can you say about you have a tremendous character who is describing the character of prophet allah so allah is allah is saying that his character is alim in in whose standards in the standards of the khalq in the standards of creation his character is magnificent or in the standards of the creator to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying wa innaka verily ta'kid wa innaka la ala again confirming affirming verily you are upon a tremendous character o muhammad allah the creator of this magnificent creation, seen and unseen. And what's unseen is more than what is seen. He is describing his Habib, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Who can come close to making Madih or giving 
Prophet prays about this uh, uh, verse. But the Quran is it's in its entirety from beginning to end is is about Prophet وسلم, because anytime Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praising a good character or praising a type of people, for example, is praising uh, mu'minin. Who is the master of believers? Sayyidina Muhammad. So he has the grandest share of praise. If Allah is praising muttaqin, the God conscious and pious ones, who is Imam al muttaqin Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Who is the most, uh, if Allah is praising generosity, who is the most generous amongst all of creation? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the entire Quran from its, its beginning to end is Madiha of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For anyone who's complaining that people get together to, to this, is, this is nothing. It's like little children playing. Well, what do we say? We write books and maulids and it's nothing. And Prophet ﷺ is ghani anha, is not in need. He's got all the, the praise in the Holy Quran, oceans of praise. Oceans of Allah's praise of Sayyidina Muhammad ﷺ. Oceans that never end. As we said, how are you going to limit the khuluq of Prophet ﷺ? When Allah is saying, well, you have a tremendous azim. What is azim? What ocean of azama is Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu khuluq? Means endlessly, endless perfection upon perfection of khuluq, of character. Never ending. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. So people, people, unfortunately, they, they don't understand now, not their fault, because of the poison that has been injected in the Ummah for tens of years. People are afraid that they are overly praising our beloved Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, because, and, and they quote the hadith, لا تطروني كما أطرت النصارى نبيهم أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم that don't praise me as the Christians praise their prophets also well, how the christians praise their prophet they said he is god they said he is the son of god so don't do this which muslim says sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam which muslim praised prophet the way the christians praised their prophet no one that's why Imam Busayri said, "Da'ma da'atuh al-Nasara fi Nabiyyihum wahkum bima shi'ta fihi madhan wahtakimi." Leave that which the Christians have done to their Prophet, which means to label him as God or Son of God, and then he said, "Wahkum bima shi'ta fihi." As long as you don't do that, then the field is open. Say what you want about him, or no problem. The problem is, I was asked to give a, to make a maulid in one masjid, not to mention, but you know, they have to be, the Imam has to be careful. So he was saying, please, you know, we stick to the Quran and Hadith Sahih. Please don't include, <laughs> don't include anything. I said, don't worry. I said, I'm not going to step on any toes if I can. So I said, I said, how about we, we just keep it to, uh, as you said, Quran and Hadith. Sahih Hadith. He said, thank you very much, please. But he, I'm thinking, even if I just use verses of Quran, you know, with the interpretations of uh, Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, or the Arifin Billah, or, or, or our Shaykh's teacher's interpretation, it will make them, it will make them, <laughs> how, what you're going to say about uh, uh, Holy Quran? You take, just, uh, this came to me to say, to say to, when I go there, inshallah. Simple thing. 
about the importance this is this is one one point that people are not paying attention to and you go to the masajid no one is bringing it up for people although it's so essential for their spiritual life is the importance of the role prophet plays in the life of muslims in dunya and eternally what does he mean for us sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam no one is is teaching muslims that their relationship with prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam will dictate uh, their eternal happiness or not and it's, it's just, you take a verse of Quran uh, from Surah Al Hujurat, a few verses of Quran. Allah says, O oh, you believe, with those who believe, don't put yourself ahead of Prophet. Don't in any way, don't put your mind ahead of his mind. Don't put your opinion ahead of his opinion. Don't put your family ahead of his family. Don't put yourself ahead of himself. Don't put... لا تقدم بين يدي واتقوا الله and have taqwa إن الله سميع عليم Then he says يا أيها الذين آمنوا استعيد بالله لا ترفعوا أصواتكم فوق صوت النبي ولا تجهر له بالقول كجهر بعضكم لبعض أن تحبط أعمالكم وأنتم لا تشعرون Or you believe, do not raise your voices above the voice of Sayyidina Muhammad Don't talk to him لا تجهر كجهر بعضكم لبعض Don't address him as you would address each other And uh, one of the عارفين بالله he said that includes all human interactions. Don't interact with him in any way you would interact with another human being, even if it is a king. How much reverence you would give to a king, you have to, you have to give him more than that. Any human relationships. You have to speak with him in a manner more humble than you would speak when you're standing in front of a king. Don't raise your voice. But how, what is this transgression? See how small it is, how minute. Raising your voice. Some, I have a loud voice. And maybe Allah saved me from not being born at the time of Prophet. <laughs> may just my speaking voice would be high. But it's a small, it's a small transgression. It's a small, يعني, you didn't say anything bad. You just raised your voice. Look at the punishment for such transgression. Allah is showing how much we have to revere and respect Sayyidina Muhammad. He said, if you do so, such a small uh, mistake, what happens? أن تحبط أعمالكم وأنتم لا تشعرون He's talking. Sahaba. He say, if you raise your voice in his presence, all your deeds may be nullified. Your prayers, your fasting, your charities will be completely erased. For a simple transgression. So the ulama say from Mimbab Awla, Allah used, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the lowest transgression. So from Bab Awla, if this brings back such punishment, what if you say something to offend Prophet ﷺ? Those crazy ones that talk about his mother and father going, not going to heaven. And if you talk about their own mother and father not going to heaven, they would get offended. You'd hurt their feelings. But they have no problem harming Prophet. So if if the most smallest transgression brings such severe punishment from Allah, Allah is showing us be careful with this Nabi. So does this Prophet, your relationship to him, does it affect your akhirah or not? Now, today, 
If somebody speak about Prophet, your your relationship, your understanding to, your love or lack of it, your respect or lack of it, does it affect your akhirah or not? It affects your akhirah. Now it affects your akhirah. On the opposite end of the spectrum, what happens if you show respect? The next verse says, "Inna al-ladina wasta'id bil ayyadun aswatahum inda Rasulillah." Those who lower their voice in the presence when they speak with him, they speak to him with adab, and they lower their voice. Look at the simple act of showing respect and lowering your voice in his presence. Inna al-ladina yadun aswatahum inda Rasulillah. Those who lower their voice in his presence, in the messenger's presence, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those are the ones who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purified their hearts and made and and, and certified them as muttaqeen. The taqwa. Oh, everybody says taqwa, taqwa, taqwa. Look at the criteria for taqwa. Respect Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Honor Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You want to be from muttaqin. Simple act of lowering your voice in his presence. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said these people are muttaqin. Tahan Allahu Qulub. They've been purified, certified. Ahl taqwa people of taqwa. And what is their uh, what is their reward? Lahum maghfira, forgiveness. All their transgressions. Lahum maghfira. Wa ajrun azim. And a Allah is again saying azim, a grand, a grand reward. For what? Lowering your voice in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Billah alaykum. Is this, is he relevant in our lives? Or as they say, he's no role to play. Today, in your relationship to Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam, if your relationship to Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam is, is not right, it will affect your akhirah. And it might affect your dunya as well. If your connection to Prophet Wasallam is not built on love and respect today people with akhir zaman people if people say hadith of prophet ah hadith daif sheikh nazim one sheikh nazim used to get so angry when somebody says that he says how you, how you, you talk like this about the hadith of prophet somebody says hadith of prophet maulana sheikh nazim he said never anybody say hadith of prophet except he listens as if prophet is talking sallallahu alaihi wasallam when his name was mentioned, his name, Imam Malik used to become pale in Medina. Turn yellow. These people don't have a live relationship with Prophet Why would a scholar turn yellow when he hears Prophet's name? And when they asked him about it, he says, you haven't seen anything. He says, my sheikh, my teacher, when we mentioned Prophet in his presence, he used to cry profusely until we feel sorry for him and we get up from the majlis and we say, let's go. They, these people don't have a connection to Prophet ﷺ in their lives. We are cut, we cut ourselves off. Why? Because we don't show him importance anymore. We don't show him respect anymore. We don't honor him. We don't praise him. We don't make salawat on him daily. We don't learn about him. This is because of that we feel uh, yani, the best of us maybe will say salawat on him or every now and then we, we come together and we make praise. But we don't have that ishq. We don't have that love and reverence and respect that transforms you. That makes your life aligned with the way he wants you to be. 
صلى الله عليه وسلم May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding and grant us inshallah to be from those whose hearts are filled with love and respect for Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ya Rabbi Tawbah astaghfirullah Inshallah tonight we will do a short a maulid after after the zikr because it's the night of the night uh, at noon academy it's a limited gathering on Sunday uh, we will do another maulid here inshallah um, and then we have a few maulids throughout the month on the 30th in Mississauga on Rabi al Awal, we have a Mawlid in Bramford. The Imam Tariq called on the 31st. And 29th, we, where? 29th is uh, in Halton. Halton, on Halton, yeah. 29th in Halton. So, Alhamdulillah, they're keeping us busy with Mawlid this month. <laughs> Shukrullah. Inshallah, we may be going to uh, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Arwah on the weekend of the 23rd, inshallah. Allah, 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 Allah,